Hello. Um, I had done video number two for you and it went for like another half hour, like the first video, but the first video took a long, 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 long time to upload to YouTube. So what I'm going to do is try and actually break the videos up into maybe 10 minute videos. So we'll see how we go. Um, what we're going through um, for now is bas basically Revelation 13 verses 11 to 18. So we've already touched on the first beast and now we discover that there is not just one beast, there are two beasts. There's a second beast and this was really exciting to me. I was like, what? I've never noticed that before. I've read this so many times <laughs> and I never noticed really in its, in its minute detail that it's actually two beasts working in unison. So, all right, so let's, um, yeah, if you haven't got your Bible, um, go get it, um, grab a coffee, whatever you'd like. Um, for this part, for the second part of uh, Revelation 13, I highly recommend um, pen and paper so you can make notes. The first part was pretty straightforward. This is the beast. This is what he does. Um, seven heads, um, you know, strange animal parts to it. We know how long he's going to be ruling for. But then this second part, it can get a bit confusing if you don't make notes. Well, that's what I found. So. Yeah, so pause if you need to and um, we'll get started. Okie dokie, so um, let's start with prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray that you come and join us for this study. Send your Holy Spirit to give clarity to our minds, to give us understanding and to grasp all exactly what you'd like us to to learn today let us know only your truth that is all we want indeed jesus name we pray amen okay so let's go to um revelation 13 verse 11 then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. So the first beast comes out of the waters. This beast comes up out of the earth. Now, like I mentioned before, we were taught that the waters meant the nations. Um, <clears throat> that could be the case. I'm open to, to still accepting that. It's just I don't know where that is in, in the Bible. It could be in one of the old prophecy books. I, I don't know. So it would be interesting to know, to work out what the earth means. Um, I think of, you know, upon death we go, we get buried, body gets buried, gets put into the earth. So it makes me think that maybe this is some ancient type of ruler like as in um it's it's a ruler that was once powerful and it hasn't been for some time and now it rises up so if there is symbolism there that's what i'm thinking but that's totally my own personal thought there um it'd be interesting to see what what the bible might say elsewhere regarding the symbolism of earth but what I want to point out is that these two beasts, we've got beast number one in the first half of Revelation 13, and then this beast number two, okay? And they seem to be very different. So beast number one, seven heads, looks like a horrible beast with, with bear-like paws, um, like a leopard's body or something. Um, I don't quite remember now. Yeah, like a leopard's body. Um, all of the seven heads have horns on them one of the seven heads was injured at some point and was healed so we worked out that they might be seven kingdoms because they are seven heads 
wearing seven crowns, like wearing a crown each. So it might have been that one of those kingdoms has failed at some point, but then it did okay. This beast, beast number two, is coming up out of the earth, not out of the waters. And it goes on to say, it had two horns like those of a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. So the fact that this is mentioned, you know, like, because, okay, let's think about this. When we look at an animal, we don't, we don't, we don't, uh, well, I don't tend to pay attention to its horns. Like, um, you, you know, when we, when I, when we saw the deer at the deer farm, we learned about its horns, which is really amazing. But if we hadn't have learned the interesting facts about the horns, it would have been like, oh, you know, the deer were just so cute and so beautiful and, you know, and they were very soft to touch and they had such cute faces and you don't really focus on the horns. You wouldn't say, well, its horns was like this. Um, but here in the Bible, it tells, it, it goes straight to the horns. Now, with the first beast, one of the heads had its horn damage. Was it the horn? Oh, I wish I could have done this um, all at once. Um, Okay, no, it's not to do, it wasn't in an injury to the horn, so it's okay. So, it, it's interesting to me that it tells us the horns were like that of a lamb. So, like, you know, it's sort of like, hint, hint, this ruler could look like a lamb, could look innocent, could look kind, could look benign, but really, it spoke like a dragon. And from the first half of Revelation 13, we we <clears throat> the dragon was also mentioned like not a dragon the dragon was mentioned and we also worked out who that was that's satan so this is really interesting verse 12 it exercises all the authority of the first beast in its presence and it makes the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast the one whose fatal wound had been healed so let's stop there so that's where it becomes really obvious that there are two beasts beast number one beast number two he doesn't have seven heads this one does so this one seems to be like a a worldly world power because it's like several nations seem to be or several kingdoms seem to be to form this beast this one we're not told it's got many heads we're just told to focus on its horns. It looks like a lamb, but it doesn't speak like a lamb. It speaks like a dragon. So whatever this power looks like, it doesn't sound like it's a whole other lot of kingdoms. It might be just one kingdom or one kind of authority in the world. But these two now start working together. So they're working in unison. This guy... Um, He makes the earth, so he's got enough authority to tell everyone what to do or to put policies into place. He makes the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast. So he's got this guy we now know. If he can make the whole earth do something, he's got, you know, huge, like, immense power for whatever reason. He's come, come along with equal authority to these many kingdoms, right? This sounds like one kingdom or one power, and he's got equal authority to these many kingdoms. So, we'll go on to verse 13, which gives us more of a clue as to why he has such authority. Verse 13, it says, It performs great miracles. That's this one. Even causing fire to come down from heaven onto the earth as people watch. Now, he's not God. He's not Jesus. So, he can 
mm, cause such miracles to happen, but why? I will mention that in the next video.